Hello, everybody. We're starting 30 seconds early because Shadow Fox brought the fox den. Welcome in. Thank you all for coming. Uh, I'm Ethan Evans. I'm the Easy Coach. And tonight we're going to talk about uh, how to be smarter you, which I don't actually think is possible. But uh, in your job and in your career, how to appear smarter. And that's all that actually matters is if you can do your work better, uh, people will still love it. Oh, and I see the Rex243 is here with the Fox Den. Uh, he asked me how he could ask questions before the broadcast, and he filled up the question queue because he couldn't be here, and now he's here anyway. So welcome back, the Rex. Uh, <clears throat> and it's wonderful to have everyone here. A couple things about the channel that have changed, uh, particularly for the Fox Den. You guys have been here before, but I'll go ahead and share it. Um, we had some troll trouble last time, so we did put chat into follower only mode. So please follow the channel and wait your, oh, I guess Shadow, uh, Shadow Fox disabled follower only, which is fine. She's lead moderator. She can make that choice, but you still want to follow the chat uh, or follow the channel. Oh yeah, and I decided it's okay to drink on stream. So after weeks of water, we're going with Riesling tonight. But anyway, follow the channel now so that if we have to go back into follower only mode, uh, you're all covered. Um, yeah, <laughs> no, it's totally good to uh, turn it off for now. We don't have we only have friendly people here so far. So uh, the way the channel works is I usually give an open opening story or two about uh, the topic, which will be how to be more effective at work by learning how to appear uh, smarter by being more effective and better educated and then I answer questions so all of you should see an extension on your screen it was built by uh, our producer awesome Dave who's in the chat but what you can do there is you can uh, vote for any of the questions in the queue or add your own and those questions uh, I answer them in the order they're voted up once we get through the opening of the show a um, couple other things. Uh, when I'm here, I only speak for myself. I don't speak for Twitch or Amazon, even though I run Twitch Prime at Amazon. Um, and so my opinions are my own. And uh, you can get any of our past broadcasts. You can get them um, on YouTube. You can get them as podcasts. We're behind a couple of podcasts, but we'll catch up shortly with the conversion process. Uh, I'm on as the Easy Coach on YouTube. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter. And we have a brand new Discord server. Um, I have to do, uh, we'll see, I have to pull the link, the invite link, so I can send it out to everybody. Uh, let me do that now. So if I go silent for a minute, it's me navigating Discord. Da, 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 da. Set this link to never expire. Uh, all right, let's see if I managed to do this right. Apparently not. Oh, ho. sweet. There's the Discord invite. So we use Discord mainly to update between broadcasts because since I work full time, I don't broadcast a ton. I broadcast uh, once to twice a week, usually at six o'clock Pacific. Um, although we'll be doing uh, some special coaching broadcasts uh, in the future uh, as a part of our coaching contest, which you can read about over on the Easy Coach website, which you can also follow us there. That's where we announce all new shows. So. Plenty of preamble, let's get into it. Uh, before I jump into the topic, I thought I'd mention I was away last week because um, I spent last week down in Las Vegas for Prime Day. I run Twitch Prime, and we did the Twitch Prime Crown Cup, which was a really interesting experience. I've never done anything like it. Uh, we went to the Luxor Las Vegas, which has the HyperX Arena. 
Uh, we ran an Apex tournament, and we brought in uh, nine streamers, uh, eight celebrities, one of whom was a streamer in, in, in disguise, Jericho. And we ran a, a kind of uh, edited Apex challenge where the idea was, if you know CSGO in VIP mode, it was keep the, the, keep the celebrity alive as long as you can. Uh, got to meet Supergirl, uh, the actress uh, who plays Supergirl. She was really nice, a lot of fun, and completely terrible at Apex Legends, but uh, really stuck to it. And so I'll give her credit for that. Uh, she was a lot of fun in the end. Uh, she came in dead last, um, like kind of dramatically. I didn't know someone could have a needle stuck into their character's chest so many times in one match. Um, but it was fun to watch. So uh, just sharing that. Um, <clears throat> that's where I was. Let's see. So if you want to vote up questions, I see some people have voted. We'll jump into those in a little while. Um, I have a question I do want to ask. Get the chat involved here for a second. Uh, Prime Day. Prime Day was Amazon's all-time biggest sales event. Uh, we just announced it eclipsed last year's, um, Black Friday and Cyber Monday combined, who bought something at Prime Day and what did you buy? Put it in chat. Uh, I'm curious because I was busy working and bought nothing, uh, but I may learn uh, that my family members bought a lot. Yeah, there we go. Uh, we're going to start seeing in, ch in chat what people bought, and there were a lot of good deals. It was fun. Um, but if you shopped Prime Day, uh, tell us what you bought, and if you ignored Prime Day, tell me why. Um, because obviously we try really hard to make sure everybody gets something they value on Prime Day. Um, okay, uh, while you do that, uh, let's see. I missed the 5,000 mistakenly sold for 100. Yeah, there was, uh, there was a case, I guess it's in the news, where somebody figured out how to get $13,000 of camera gear. Oh, Chalupa Whale, thank you so much for subbing the five gift subs. That's huge. Congratulations, Fire Sticks, Observer, Cinevision, Sierra Golf, Charlie. All right, SGC, hmm. and Tumble Turd. All right, living with the great names there. Cameras, yeah, thirteen thousand dollars in cameras. Um, all right, uh, like the mods have posted, proceeds from any subscriptions go to support the Washington Trails Association. I actually will have the executive director of the Washington Trails Association on the show later this uh, fall. Um, yeah, posture improving device for sitting more straight. I need that. Um, <clears throat> what else? Uh, there was something else people bought. Oh yeah, the Prime Day is crazy. A 55 inch 4K TV for $3.99. That is a great deal. Give me the pizza. Um, are you watching us on it now? Uh, anyway, an Apple Watch, a couple of Echoes, a dash cam. All right, Shivang, you were you were definitely uh, maybe the the winner for buying the most. Um, Shloop Whale, we need a PRFAQ on Personal Prime. Mm. That would be an interesting idea. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, Kurgan, we have we have links turned off for everybody. It's nothing personal. Also, uh, I appreciate that. It's not personal. Um, <clears throat> but we'll figure out how to turn on linking in the future. We've got the channel pretty locked down at the moment. Um, <clears throat> all right. So let's talk about the topic, how to get smarter. Look, it's it was uh, clickbait as a title in a way. I don't believe you can make yourself actually smarter. Um, what you can do uh, is, number one, you can be well rested. And I'm not going to go into rest and nutrition. I'm not an expert. You can read all about it. You can find probably someone else like Bajira, who is a good streamer for that. Um, but if you're well rested and eat right, that will probably make you smarter or appear smarter. Um, uh, we have our first troll. I love it. Luckily, Automod caught him. So, see you later. Anyway, um, 
Uh, here's how you can be smarter, how you can appear smarter. I use this analogy a lot. So if you know me and I tell you a joke and you think it's a funny joke, uh, you'll think, hey, Ethan told me a funny joke. But if every time I see you, uh, you, um, I tell you a funny joke, eventually something changes in your head and you start to think if every time you run into me, I say something funny, you think Ethan's a funny guy. And the same thing can happen at work. If every time I work with you and we run into each other, you have a good idea or something smart to say or a, something new to offer, I will start to think you're really competent. It could be because you're brilliant and you were born brilliant, or it could be because you've really learned your job. And tonight I thought we'd talk some about learning your job. Uh, <clears throat> and so how do we do that? Well, learning a job is essentially... Uh, getting better what are called EQ skills, uh, which is emotional quotient rather than IQ. Um, EQ is controllable and it can be changed. And so uh, you can improve your EQ by learning better social skills, by learning better job skills. And so if you want to appear smarter at work, uh, and if you actually want to be more effective and be treated better, you've got to be more skilled at what you're doing and more valuable. So the number one thing to talk about here, if you haven't heard of it, is something called the growth mindset. And the growth mindset was coined by a woman named Carol Dweck. She has a book called The Growth Mindset. But basically, there's a difference between the growth mindset and the fixed mindset. And the fixed mindset essentially believes you're born with whatever talents you have you're only going to be able to do the things that you were gifted to do. Um, and that tends to lead to the belief that if you failed at something, it's because you're not smart enough, um, not because you don't have the skill or the experience. And it tends to make people afraid to take risks because if you fail, there's nothing you can do about it because you're dumb uh, and you're uh, not going to, be able to change that and so you don't want to reveal yourself to your boss or your friends or your spouse or whatever as a dummy um, if you contrast that to uh, the growth mindset the growth mindset believes that setbacks are a learning opportunity and that you can always get better and so if you study up if you get some training if you try again if you work harder if you prepare more you can improve and change. Um, and so by all means, uh, I'm a fan of the growth mindset. You don't have to read Carol Dweck's whole book to get the point. Um, I probably gave you a lot of it. Um, there's a book I do like. I'll switch over. We'll play high tech here again. Um, this is going to go over my face. I'll lean out of the way in a second. Uh, there's a book I really like. Uh, that talks about this called the outward mindset. I'll lean over so I'm on screen. Um, so the outward mindset is basically a variation of this book, The Growth Mindset, and it's talking about how to look at other people in a different way. I'm a big fan of this book, so tonight we'll be talking a lot about different books you can use to improve your skills. Um, but this book is one about how you can grow and look beyond your limitations. Um, and I'm not trying to be Pollyanna here, right? It's a lot of work. So I'm not saying that you can improve in your career by some magic formula. Uh, I don't have any shortcuts. That's a different book that's fun. It's uh, written by Ed Vistiers about climbing all. He's the first American to climb every 8,000 meter peak in the world without using any canned oxygen. And his book is called No Shortcuts to the Top. Um, I, it has nothing to do with improving your career, but it's a good attitude. So anyway, we'll turn this off and come back to it later. Um, all right. So uh, story, and then we'll hit the first question. So if you haven't voted yet, uh, we have a question that's been voted up a bunch. I'll take it first. If you want to drop into the extension and vote any questions up, please do. Um, and I'll answer them in the order they're in there. But so... Here's the truth, right? I'm, I'm doing pretty well in life. I've, I've been very lucky uh, in that 
I, I got a job at Amazon. I've risen to VP. I got to be EVP of Twitch for a while until I got sick of traveling and, and uh, focused only on Twitch Prime. Um, but I wasn't the smartest kid in my high school by any means. Uh, I went to uh, high school in a college town. So there were a lot of college professors' kids. They were pretty sharp. And I graduated 17th, as I recall, out of about 330. So like fifth percentile. So all right, solid, but not great. <clears throat> and uh, I went to college. Um, I certainly wasn't the smartest there. There were people at my college that were scary smart. Um, one of the guys at my college could take any two four digit numbers you gave him. So you would like say to him, seven two six three times one eight seven five and he could as fast as you could say them he could tell you the answer to that i have no idea how he did it but he could multiply two four digit numbers as fast as you could speak and it blew my mind um so smart is great but generally i've had more uh career success and it comes from hard work plus taking criticism well uh, when people give me feedback, I had a boss tell me basically I was took harsh feedback better than most people. Um, and so uh, I started getting my list of areas to improve and I went and worked on them. So I'm going to drop into questions here. But what I guess I would say is you can overcome a lot. And um, I've been on a journey of lifelong self-improvement. The point of the Easy Coach now is to share that, to bring lifelong self-improvement to all of you. Um, and uh, look, I was overweight, right? If you look at me right now, I weigh about 205. Um, through a lot of my life, I weighed about 275, so down like 70 pounds, which I lost 20 years ago and have kept off. I know a lot of people struggle with that, but it's possible. Um, that's probably a different show. Uh, I was super self-centered. Uh, you would not have liked me <laughs> 30 years ago. Um, a lot of people didn't. I got punched a lot. Uh, that was before there was so much anti-bullying. Um, I got hit a lot. And by the way, I earned it all. Big mouth. Like, uh, be honest about it, right? I was, I was a, I was a tough, tough drink of water. Um, Came out of college knowing only technology. Uh, you know, I was a, I was a geek. Um, in fact, my initials, right, Ethan Evans. Uh, uh, I used to say there's a joke, you can't spell geek without double E in the middle. I was also an electrical engineer. Um, and so that's where the joke comes from, but it was kind of personal. Uh, and I've taught myself business after that, finance, personnel leadership. Some of you know the biggest team I ran was about 800. My team now is like 250. Um, and it's a blast. I love it. So you can do all of that more. Uh, let's jump to the first question. So uh, one of my mods will pop it up for you. It'll appear over my head. Uh, you can also vote on them. Um, but uh, the question is, uh, what is a good way to go about getting self-improvement sponsored by the company I work for? Uh, if they do not currently have a system or budget for that, uh, um, e.g., I would like to go to marketing event X to learn about new marketing strategies, thus increasing my value to the company. How should I approach my boss about something like this? It's usually very expensive. Yes, that's true. Um, there is no universal rule here, but uh, generally, uh, I would say rule number one, to the degree there is a rule number one, is ask. Uh, we don't have any official budget for this stuff where I work either, but mostly nobody asks. Nobody comes to my office and asks to go to a conference. Nobody comes to my office and asks if we'll sponsor training. Nobody comes and asks. I can easily say yes to the first person or the first couple people, and nobody comes. Um, so the fact that you're here, I want to give everybody who's here props because you're already on a better career improvement trajectory than almost everyone else around you. Because you're doing something. You're listening to uh, me talk. Uh, we can decide, like you get to judge if that's the best use of your time. But the fact that you're doing something sets you apart from most of the people who are doing nothing. Um, 
So first thing is go ask. Now, second, how do you go ask? Uh, you can go ask. Uh, the best way to go ask is to put it in terms of what's in it for them. Like, what are you going to do for the company better because you go to marketing event X to learn about new marketing strategies? So make a miniature business case. Um, and I don't think we can fully teach what a business case looks like here, but make a miniature business case that basically lays out, here's what it's going to cost, but here's how I'm going to make that worth it for whatever company, for Amazon, for Acme Inc., wherever you work. Um, and then uh, be willing to bring the knowledge back. Say, look, I'd be happy to do a brown bag. I'd be happy to share it with others. Um, there's a lot of different ways you can, and, and you can also ask. You can ask your boss or the leadership, hey, what would it take? What do I need to do? Like how, here's what I'm proposing. Great framing is always, here's what I'd like to do and why I think it makes sense. This is my proposal. Does that work for you? Or is there something else that would be better? And you don't say, uh, like, you, you get only give them two choices, which is, here's how I want to go to this marketing conference. Here's how you're going to send me that you like. You don't give them the choice, say no. You make them actually say, hey, uh, you know, yeah. And, and the Rex who asked this question says, maybe do a recap of the presentation with the team on your biggest new insights. Exactly. You offer that. Uh, but, but you can say, look, if you don't like that, I'll do something else. I want you to invest in me. How do I merit that? And, and you, you put it that way. Don't surprise people with two minutes either. Um, in other words, if, if the deadline for the conference is tomorrow, showing up in my office and saying, I need $10,000 plus a plane ticket. Um, by the way, I need it tomorrow uh, is much more likely to get a no. So that's a few of the tips. The last thing I would say is, look, um, consider if you would pay for something yourself. Not all learning needs to be expensive, um, but consider how you can learn on your own. And then if you do want to go to an expensive con uh, conference, consider, is it really worth it that you just do it yourself? Invest in yourself. I've done some of each. Some of the stuff I do is paid for by Amazon or Twitch. Uh, some of the stuff I do is paid for by me. And um, in the end, I'm investing in me and you should invest in you. And if you have confidence in yourself, there is no better investment than yourself, right? Because uh, relationships break up, jobs end, uh, physical stuff you buy gets old, gets stolen, burns down, whatever. But as long as you're alive, investments in yourself, no one can take away from you. So if you learn something new, it's yours forever. So uh, we beat that question to death, which I usually do. Um, <clears throat> thank you for the question. Uh, we'll go ahead and pop to the next one. And then after that, we'll do the question of the week. And for those of you who don't know the question of the week, the question of the week comes from a, a different area. Um, <clears throat> It won't be on topic, but it is fun. All right. Uh, chat says, uh, uh, Solarin2001, I also found you can call most conference organizers and negotiate. Yes. I bet that is completely true. Uh, they want people, look, an empty seat in their hall is worth zero to them. If they have space and you show up at the door and say, look, you know, uh, they also have scholarships. You can tell a hard luck story. I wouldn't encourage you to lie, but um, you can tell a hard luck story. You can say, look, my company won't pay. There's so many things you can do because once the speaker is on stage, if they have an empty seat, it's worthless to them. Like if they haven't filled all the seats. So that's really good advice. And by the way, I appreciate you, uh, Solaren. Uh, I love it when chat adds things I have forgotten or haven't thought to say because uh, the 50 some of you in chat are way smarter than me alone. Yeah, another great one from Hephaestus is volunteer. Lots of people every year, I go every year to the Games Development Conference in San Francisco, GDC. There are always tons of young game 
uh, programmers in the conference wearing like helper shirts and helping out. Uh, Kristen, uh, first time live, uh, happy to be here. I'm wondering, Kristen, with that name, uh, we had someone apply for the Easy Coach uh, long-term coaching process. Are you the same, Kristen, or just coincidence? We have someone, by the way, who's uh, pretty nervous about being in chat or being on screen. And so I'm going to bring someone on for coaching in a few weeks and uh, they'll be new to Twitch. Anyway, all right, next question. How do I find a good, yep, that's her. All right, well, we'll talk later. Uh, Kristen uh, may end up winning the, the coaching contest uh, and being one of the people we do long-term coaching with. Um, and uh, if so, uh, you'll all get to meet her in person here in a few weeks. Um, how do I find a good mentor in a company I work for and what can I do to bring value into the relationship? Um, <clears throat> So I think I have a whole show back a few weeks that you can find on YouTube um, uh, about mentors and picking a mentor. Um, but uh, briefly re-answering for everyone who's here who hasn't heard it, um, how do I find a good mentor in a company I work for and what can I do to bring value? Um, the biggest thing I say is know what you wanna be mentored on. In other words, don't just ask for a mentor. You want a mentor in what? You want a mentor in leadership. You want a mentor in design skills. You want a mentor in tech skills, finance. Have a topic. Second thing is, talk to that person about what they want, like what would work for them? Why do they like to mentor? What, what do they want for value? Uh, the third thing I think is be organized and be respectful of time. Um, I have people, and I've said this before in my other mentorship show, who show up, they ask me if I will be their mentor, uh, and then they show up and they ask, uh, they basically sit down and look at me and they're like, okay, you're my mentor. And they're just kind of waiting, like, please put the intelligence into my head. I haven't thought of any questions. I don't really know my topic but I've heard you're a good mentor and make me better. Um, that's not a really awesome assignment. Um, and it's hard for me to actually do, uh, you know, cause I have no idea what your areas are. So you're putting all the burden on me. Don't do that to your mentor. Um, give me the pizza popped in and said, uh, I asked for a mentor. Um, uh, I ask a mentor, I also ask a mentor question. You may remove it from the queue. Yeah, no worries. Um, I'm happy to re-answer them, but there is a show on YouTube about mentors, sponsors, coaches, etc. I believe. Um, and I certainly have talked about picking a mentor, uh, know your topic, and then um, shoot high for a mentor and realize uh, you don't have to have a lifelong mentoring relationship. In other words, if I really wanted uh, someone high up in the company to mentor me um, or someone with a very unique skill, I wouldn't say, uh, can you be my mentor? I would instead say, um, hey, can you have three meetings with me about your expertise and tell me about X, Y, Z? So for example, someone I've mentored before at Amazon came back to me because they've heard my show and know my theories and said, look, I really want to know about the path to vice president. Can you meet with me a couple times and tell me what it takes to go from where I am to being an Amazon vice president? And I said, yes, I can do that. And we scheduled a couple meetings and then it'll be over. Um, and busy people don't like to get committed, committed necessarily to mentoring forever. Um, uh, and it also, uh, Chat says, work provided me with an external coach and mentor. Don't be afraid of asking for that, I guess. That is absolutely true. Uh, coaching can sound both really expensive and really cheap. Um, regular professional coaches are generally about 200 bucks an hour. It's a lot, but you shouldn't need that many hours. And in the scale of a professional workplace, 200 bucks an hour is not that much. Meaning, um, uh, 200 bucks an hour is uh, 
not that much compared to say college tuition reimbursement, which some places do, or even training classes. Um, and again, you have to make a business case, like this is what I wanna coach for, this is for how long, this is the issue, this is how it's gonna make me better. All right, uh, let's do the question of the week. So let me explain question of the week, cause it's good fun. A few weeks ago, we talked about a paper from a guy, a researcher named Arthur Aaron. And Arthur Aaron had this idea uh, that sharing about yourself could make help you build a relationship with any person. And he ran this test, this set of experiment, where he had 36 questions that became progressively more personal as you go down the list. And what he found was that when two people answer these questions with each other, they generally are willing to go all the way to the end of the list from a very innocuous first question to a very personal last question. And by the end of that, they actually feel very connected. And some percentage of the people actually ended up feeling more connected to the person they talked to uh, for about 45 minutes going through these 36 short questions then they felt connected to their mom or their significant other. So that's pretty scary, actually pretty shocking. Um, just means we all have bad relationships with our mothers, but that's a topic for Freud. Um, Uh-oh, is there a new link for the Discord? The one below says invalid. That shouldn't be true. It shouldn't have gone invalid, but I'm not gonna debug that right now. Um, OX couch, we'll, we'll come back to that in a second. Uh, so sorry about that. Um, are you on your phone? Shadow Fox will help. Okay, um, so anyway, two weeks ago, we did question one, which is if you could have dinner with anyone in the world, uh, living or dead, who would you choose for dinner? And it was a lot of fun. Um, so that was awesome. Uh, so number two, uh, I don't remember. Uh, we could look it up, but it's not that important. Uh, the question of the week for this week, which uh, people should answer in chat, and I will answer here on stream, is, uh, remember this survey is 30 years old. This research is 30 years old, so we'll update the question. But the official question was, um, before you call someone on the telephone, do you ever rehearse what you're going to say? Um, and then I think it said, why? Um, and so, uh, do you ever rehearse what you're going to say? Uh, you can imagine this, if we update it to today, before you Snapchat anyone, do you think about what you're going to do? Um, so, uh, oh yeah, what would your ultimate job be? All right. Um, anyway, answer in chat, whether you think in terms of calling or social media, how much uh, is, uh, what do you want to be famous for? That's right. Thank you. That was the one, um, uh, that was the one last week is what do you want to be famous for? So question one, who would you have dinner with anyone living or dead? Question two, what would you like to be famous for? And question three is, do you ever rehearse what you're going to say on the phone before you make the call? Um, and I'm actually going to turn this into a coaching lesson. I do it all the time. Uh, there are two reasons. Um, one, my wife makes fun of me because I'm really nervous talking to strangers. Like if I'm talking to someone that I've never, I'm, I'm the classic guy who will never stop for directions. I would rather drive around lost, uh, at least until desperate, starving, and about to run out of gas. I just don't like it. Um, but I can get by it. And so uh, the advice, though, I would say for career is you can do something in your mind called preloading a response. And what preloading a response is, is if you're going into a difficult situation or if you um, feel like somebody's gonna uh, irritate you or may irritate you, you can choose how you're gonna respond before you ever have to do it. And so my favorite story on this is, um, hopefully this friend will never see this broadcast. Um, but my favorite story on this is uh, years ago, I was going to get on a boat uh, with an acquaintance, and that acquaintance uh, has some personality traits 
uh, that get under people's skin. Um, and uh, specifically, if you've done something, he's done it better. If you own something, he owned it first. If you have a big car, his is bigger. If you have a big house, his is bigger. If you have nice clothes, his are nicer. Um, and uh, boats are very small places. But this fellow um, had just bought a nice boat and he wanted help moving it uh, from Fort Lauderdale, Florida to um, Washington, D.C. And I thought, OK, uh, this trait, you know, and I don't think he means harm, by the way. It's just who he is. Um, but this trait I knew in a small place would drive me nuts. And I thought. Uh, how am I, I want to go on this trip. Like we were all invited um, because he needed help on the boat and we we're, and we're friends, right? Um, uh, we were invited to help deliver the boat. And I thought, wow, this will be five days at sea. I've never done a deep ocean voyage and respect to this guy. He's a good sailor. I felt safe sailing with him in the open ocean. Um, and thanks to all the people who are answering. I'll jump into your answers in a second, but I want to make my point here, which is I got on this boat and I preloaded my mind when he starts saying things that I find irritating and there's nowhere to go on a boat. So it's not like I can just walk away or go home for the night. Uh, hi, Gongi. Um, uh, uh, somebody says I look tired today. It's probably the wine. No, I do feel tired. I got home late last night from Twitch. I was there yesterday. Uh, I can talk a little bit about what I was doing at Twitch HQ in San Francisco, but we'll switch to water and maybe that'll help. Um, and yeah, I didn't uh, caffeine up either. All right, finishing the story. Um, this guy, uh, I was trapped on the boat, uh, but I decided, you know, when this happens, I'm just going to let it roll off my back. And I'm going to say, oh, thank you. That's awesome. Or whatever. Well, indeed, he uh, started getting under people's skin. He was big into the Atkins diet at the time, and he had provisioned the boat. So some of you know the Atkins diet. It's all like... Um, Cheese and meat, basically. No bread. Well, there's a bunch of people uh, on the... on the, Yeah, nothing makes a skipper look as good as a fast boat. That's true, and I learned that from these guys. Um, bottom line is, uh, the first annoyance was he provisioned the boat with what he liked to eat. And that's cool normally, but like when you're on a very specific diet, um, when you're on a very specific diet, that isn't a... Uh, great way to like welcome all the other people who might not want to eat only turkey bacon and big blocks of cheddar cheese which are the two things i primarily remember being on the boat um so uh hi it's your boat friend you find me annoying i do um but i love you anyway and it was a great trip So the point is, when these things started to happen, I didn't let them bother me. And it, normally they had driven me nuts, but I already decided, like this phone call, how am I going to respond to this? Because I know it's coming. Um, and uh, so bottom line is, uh, the boat, uh, on the boat, I had a very calm friend. And this guy, over the days, got so far under his skin that they blew up and fought all the time. And I just shook it off. And it was because I had prepared my response. So from a career viewpoint, if you're going into a tough meeting, think about your words. And so very early in my job at Amazon, um, I wanted to go ask for a raise. And I thought real, or I wanted to ask to be promoted. That's what it was. And I thought really long and hard about how am I going to ask my boss about promotion? Because I know... I was pretty new to the company and I'm like, I knew he wasn't that into it. He was kind of like, the, uh, was more like, well, we'll get around to you when you've been here a few years. And I thought really long and hard about what I was going to say. And I decided on specific words and I said, um, uh, I said very precisely, um, well, my career is very important to me. And I need to know if my career is also important to Amazon. Um, and this may or may not have been the best words, but they were non-threatening. They were a way, because no one can look at you and say, well, your career shouldn't be important to you. They can say they don't want to promote you. They can say they don't think you're worthy, but no one can look at you and say like, well, you're wrong to think about your own development. 
All right, so cool. Uh, that's how uh, I pre-plan phone calls. Um, uh, so, and I recommend it. Excellent career skill. All right, we got a question here. We'll jump to it. Um, so mods will pop it up, but what advice would you give to a smart, driven college student about to enter the real world? What advice should they ignore? Oh my God. Um, I love, uh, thank you uh, for the following. Um, so uh, what advice uh, would you give to a college student? Uh, <clears throat> thanks for the subs, 40 Pink Dragons. Um, a smart, driven college student. Okay, if you're really smart and driven, um, I would say find a place that's on the, if you're willing to, find a smaller company that's going to be able to reward you and give you opportunities quickly. I work for a big company and I would recommend anyone working at Amazon if they could, um, but uh, small companies can often be more agile in the jobs uh, that you can do. They will let you do more because they need more. They're more desperate. Uh, honestly, they have more work. They're less rigid. And so big companies have more structure. They have better mentors. They have more training. Usually they have better benefits. So there's nothing wrong with a big company. But uh, I would potentially look at a smaller company. I learned a ton early in my career and definitely got to do things that I had no business doing because I was working for startups. And so startups don't have things. So like, for example, I'm an engineer. Engineers are normally the last people on earth you would let run human resources. But I had an interest in it. And I worked at a couple startups. They couldn't afford a human resources person. They didn't have anyone. So when I stepped up and said, don't worry, I'll do all the recruiting and all the HR, they were like, thank God. We're busy fundraising. We're busy selling. You figure that benefit stuff out. You figure out. And so I got to make up all the benefits. Um, so that was maybe self-interested. Um, yeah, so somebody in chat, uh, Solarin, I like your comments. Uh, it says you, you fail more at startups, you learn more. Yes, failure is a painful but good teacher. Um, Chad, if you have other advice for our student, feel free to chime in, by the way. Um, let's see, life will not work out totally as you plan, uh, but if you have the right attitude, it will work out. I agree with that. Passion, um, do something. That is great advice. Thank you. Um, uh, do what you're passionate about. You will do much better at it. Uh, you'll feel more energized. It will feel less like work. Um, years ago, I worked for a company that was doing uh, telco infrastructure. So we built software to be sold to people like AT&T. The job was great, meaning that's where I learned to run human resources and recruiting and all this stuff. The people I worked with were fantastic and the product bored me to death. Um, and so uh, I would absolutely say, and I've never worked in a back end product again. Um, like uh, Twitch, and people don't know this, Twitch and Amazon Games were part of Amazon Web Services. Uh, and Amazon Web Services, of course, the cloud uh, computing infrastructure at Amazon, it's fantastic, it's huge, it's incredibly reliable. Um, but it's not what I like to do. I like to build things for end consumers, which is why I work at Twitch and it's why I'm here. I like to talk to actual people. I don't like to do business to business. So even though that business is incredible, it's not the right fit for me. So my advice, which someone said here, attitude before aptitude, um, completely true. Uh, so yeah, someone here echoed what I said. Uh, which is I work in a small software dev company and I'm doing and leading things I shouldn't really be doing and it's benefiting me enormously. And I couldn't agree with that more. Try to get into a place that you don't belong. Um, I was recently uh, talking to a friend of mine who is a rock climbing guide 
Uh, I had been out climbing in uh, Las Vegas with my wife at um, Red Rocks. And he said, look, you should always be climbing beyond your ability. Go climb something you have no business being on. He had some ways to do that safely. But the point is, push yourself. This is how you're going to get better. And we're talking here about Smarter You. Smarter You is all about pushing yourself. It's all about learn, fail, read books. We'll talk more about books. But keep reading. Uh, keep listening to Easy Coach, please. Um, but also then just keep, uh, keep after... Uh, some sort of education and self-improvement because uh, that's the only thing that's going to make you better over time. And a, a few hours a week turns into a few hundred hours a year, turns into a few thousand hours a decade, and no one can keep up with you. Uh, some of you probably just joined. I shared that I wasn't that uh, I wasn't at the top of my class in high school. I certainly wasn't in college, but I've done really well because I've kept working at it. All right, we'll hop to the next question. And by the way, uh, if you want to um, vote on any of the questions in the extension or add your own question, um, <clears throat> uh, we've answered that one, so we need to roll to the next one. Um, if you want to vote on any of the questions that are in uh, the extension, you can vote, and I answer them uh, in the order of the most votes. So. Uh, what is your opinion on speed reading, listening to audiobooks on two times speed and other speed hacking techniques? Um, my honest, unfortunate answer is I suck at doing that. Uh, I, uh, I tried it. Uh, I went through a speed reading class. Uh, it was very innovative. Uh, I thought like trying to read books upside down for a little while to like force your brain to get faster and turning pages really fast and trying it didn't work for me at all um i am a slow reader uh i can't do what most twitch viewers do which is work on my actual work and have a twitch stream going um so like when i watch my friend devin nash i'll be on his show monday we'll talk about that more in a little bit but when I'm on, uh, when I want to watch him or when I want to pop in the shadow stream uh, during the day, I have to have a time where I basically am only like mindlessly clicking through junk mail because I didn't grow up or develop the mindset to be able to do that. So I guess if you're able to listen to audiobooks on two times speed and it lists, sounds like a bunch of chipmunks, um, go crazy. Like I would not tell you not to do it, but I can't do it. Uh, yeah, some people say most Twitch users don't work. Uh, uh, you know, I don't think that's true. I actually think most Twitch users do have jobs. Um, there are a bunch that have a lot of free time and God bless them. But uh, so somebody says, I find that listening to things at twice the speed helps me concentrate more on the content. I'm very contemplative. So I... Um, like when I'm listening to an audiobook, I often pause it and I sit and think about how am I going to apply this? Because it's great to be prompted, but if you don't turn something from your audiobook or your podcast, even what the show I'm doing tonight, take something away from it, one thing, and do one thing now, and you'll retain way more than if you just listen. Uh, research shows really well that if you don't do something with it, like 90% of what I said, you won't be able to remember 10 minutes after the show's over. And a week from now, most of you would struggle to remember what the hell I talked to, like what was even the topic. And it's not because, oh, thank you for the thousand bits. That's awesome. Everything uh, donated to the stream goes to the Washington Trails Association. So I appreciate that very much. Um, <clears throat> so thanks for the cheer. Uh, anyway, um, I lose, uh, you're going to lose everything from what we talk about. But if you do one thing from each book you read or one thing from each of these shows, it will change who you are over time. And it doesn't have to be a huge thing. Do one thing. Um, and so I generally consider a book is worth it to me um, if uh, I get one thing out of it. 
And why is that? It's because I've read a lot of books. And so a few tips here and there. Somebody talked about Decisive earlier. Somebody else talked about Tim Ferriss. I've gotten things from both of those books. We'll talk about some other books shortly. Um, anyway, uh, look, if it works for you, do it. I guess I should say that's my classic answer. However you can learn and improve, do it. I don't care if your technique is Google. I don't care if your technique is watching Facebook videos. If it's Facebook, yeah, no, YouTube videos. I don't care if you're, or Facebook. Um, I don't care if it's going and nagging other people around your company for tips. Whatever you do that lets you learn your learning style and that you enjoy, do that. Um, all right, uh, we'll do one more question and then we'll pop to a couple books real quick. Uh, Facebook has groups you can join for tips. Um, and uh, Tell Kyle to Hydrate was one of the first people in our Discord, so welcome to him. All right. So um, what are your thoughts on listening to classical or other music while working? Does it increase productivity quality of the results in your experience? I am the wrong person to ask. Um, and the reason I'm the wrong person to ask is I am incredibly easily distracted and uh, I can only do one thing at once. So for some people that could work really well, uh, drives my wife crazy. But when we're like in the kitchen and we're having dinner, if our daughter has kids TV on like Disney Channel, she'll be talking to me or I'll be talking to her and mid sentence, I'm, I'm, I'm lost in Disney Channel videos I don't even like. I'm just, oh, moving lights. So I'm the worst person. Classical music I could probably listen to, but any other type of music, I kind of work in silence. Um, so someone says, do I use white noise? Yes. Uh, I, I need isolation. That probably goes with how I'm wired. I'm wired as an engineer, even though I do all these other things. I lead, I coach. Um, I became an engineer in the beginning because that is my personality. And a show I'm going to do sometime, uh, I haven't ever scheduled it, is to go over all the different um, workplace personality tests. But if you look at um, like the Myers-Briggs test, the, my Myers-Briggs type is the type most likely to be an engineer and most likely to go into executive work. So I literally am who my brain wired me to be. Um, and that's just, that's how it is. All right, uh, nagging my coworkers for tips is my favorite way to learn. Helps build relationships as long as you don't bother them too much. That's right. People like to be experts. Um, they like to feel wanted within reason, right? They don't want to be driven crazy, but they, they like to feel valued and like you're interested. So I'm going to flip over for a second. We'll take the next question in a minute. I'm going to flip over and page through a couple of my other favorite books, and then we'll come back. Um, so here we go. Uh, let's see. We'll unmask that. I'll hop out of the way um, and start navigating. So first, for any of you who don't know, um, I keep a blog. It's the Easy Coach. Uh, you can find my book list there. So this is the Easy Coach. It's just www.theeasycoach.com. And then you can find the book list. Uh, since I work for Amazon, whether you scroll down on the Twitch page and buy there or buy here, I do have an associate's account. I'm not leaning back enough again. Um, I do have an associate's account. So anything you buy, uh, the proceeds besides what the book costs, what Amazon pays me goes to the Washington Trails Association. And thank you for that. I'll tell you more about it another time. Broadcast might be ending soon, almost out of wine. No, kidding. All right, so books I really like. Uh, people have heard this one before. Uh, my number one book recommendation is Leadership and Self-Deception. It's about understanding yourself and the way you sabotage your own relationships at work. Um, read this, read something else. Uh, no, not the wine, that's right. If the wine is gone, it's over. Um, uh, Okay, um, second, uh, I've talked about leadership and self-deception before, so you can read about it or go hear about it. A powerful book. 
Um, I talked about the outward mindset earlier. Uh, on Devin Nash's show, we went super deep. Like there's four hours of us talking about decisive. So that's at Devin Nash. Uh, my lovely and talented assistant here, cleverly hidden by the window, is extending the broadcast. <laughs> and um, now the show can go on. All right. So Decisive is an incredible book, uh, but there's a four-hour uh, video over on Devin Nash's YouTube channel uh, where you can hear all about that. Um, okay, pre-reading for next week if you're interested. I'm going to do the book. Um, oh, and I see somebody read uh, Leadership and Self-Deception, the Rex 243. Excellent. <laughs> Why is the wine always gone? It's gone for the same reason the rum is always gone, Chalupa Whale. Uh, that's exactly why. Why is the rum gone? Okay. Uh, next week, or specifically Monday the 29th, I'm going to talk about uh, job hunting, which is a topic people always love to hear more about. And everyone will need to hunt for another job at some point. Uh, my favorite book on that is What Color Is Your Parachute? Um, the guy's an expert. It's been rewritten many times. He rewrites a new version every year. Um, if you need to look for a job now or in the future, get a copy of What Color Is Your Parachute? He also has a ton of chapters on figuring out what you should be doing. Um, so actually, for the person who asked uh, earlier about uh, a smart-driven college student, what should you do? Go read this book. Um, it's a quick read, by the way. Like It's thick, but it's really easy. So it's like reading a Jobs for Dummies book. Um, only better. Last book uh, that's just fun. Um, so this book is called I Moved Your Cheese. Um, I Moved Your Cheese. This book's like super short. It probably says how many pages it is. Uh, it's very short. Let's go down. La, la, la. Yeah, it's 120 pages, but it's super fast. And... Um, we're actually trying to get the author to come on the show. A friend of mine knows the author, and we're working to get him on the show. But uh, he's resistant. We're not famous enough yet. So if you haven't uh, followed the channel or followed the YouTube, uh, when we build up the audience a little bit, we'll bring uh, Deepak Mahaltra on the show because I have questions about his book for him. Meanwhile, um, I love this title. For those who refuse to live as mice in someone else's maze. Um, and so, uh, you know, there you have it. Uh, I love it. He's, it's a response to a book called Who Moved My Cheese? And that book's also super short if you want to read them both. All right, cool. We'll get this out of my face and we'll roll to the next question, which I think got popped up just a minute ago. All right, um, so the next question uh, is um, should slash can I bring my interest in self-improvement into the interview for a new job? Good question. Asking about their internal coaching programs, what events and workshops they would sponsor. I would not do this. There's a time when you can do it. I would not do it in the interview. Um, so... Uh, does the Amazon affiliate link work for purchases made outside the U.S.? Hmm, it should, but I'm not sure. So I know that the affiliates team was working on having affiliate links work globally. It should drop you into your local store and let you do that. Um, somebody's asking, what's the book about? Who moved your cheese? Uh, or who moved my cheese and I moved your cheese? They're both about the idea of people, when circumstances change, you can either adapt to the changing circumstances or you can get pissed off that uh, the world moved and it's no longer the way you want. So my favorite story about this, and I will answer this question, I'm going to buy myself some time to think about it. Now I have a good answer for it. Anyway, um, when I uh, went to college, I went to college in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, which was famous for steel mills, right? Everybody knows Steel Town, Pittsburgh Steelers, etc. Well, all the steel mills closed in the 70s. And I went to school there in 1987, and I was there as a student until 1991. And then I lived there a while after. 
And it was really sad because way into the 80s, even into the 90s, um, on TV, you would see these like man on the street, woman on the street interviews with Pittsburghers. And these people would start the interviews with when the mills reopen, comma. So they'd be asked like, oh, what do you think about schools? Why are schools bad in the city or whatever? And they'd say, well, you know, it's because people don't have any jobs. But when the mills reopen, comma, and it was terrible because there were no mills. They were gone. They had been bulldozed and turned into super fun sites for pollution. But these people were stuck 15 years ago, like their $40 an hour, $50 an hour union job in that steel mill that no longer existed was coming back. And that's what Who Moved My Cheese is about. And it's what I Moved Your Cheese is about. It's about you got to get out of those past ruts and people didn't do it. All right. So answering the question, um, what would I do here? You can bring your interest into self-improvement into your interview, but I would bring it in in the form of what you have done. This is how I've improved myself. I would find a way to work in, well, at my last job, I took this class and this is the impact I had. Or my last job, I was lucky enough to have a coach and they taught me this, with this kind of impact. If I wanted to ask them about what they provide, if I want to ask an employer about that, I would wait until they made me a job offer. Because once they decide they want you, you can then, um, uh, and yeah, Bobby, you beat me to it in chat. You said exactly what I just said. Good job. I didn't see it, so I wasn't cribbing from you, but I absolutely would have. Um, if you want to know what they will do for you, you wait until they're ready to hire you. And then you ask, hey, I really want to go to the XYZ conference every year. Is that something you're going to be able to do? And if they say yes or maybe or weasel, you say, well, could we write it into my offer letter? Or do you think you could commit to that? Um, and that's actually a negotiating tactic, uh, which is, a lot of places can't give you more money because they have like an HR group that sets the salary range or they have a fixed hourly pay, but they can give you special perks because it's a different budget. So that's a way to actually raise your comp. Yep. So obviously Kristen here uh, says she's interviewing a lot of people and actually asks about how they want to grow. I'd certainly have an answer to that because if I ask someone in an interview, uh, how are you thinking about growing? What would you like to grow or learn? And they're like, yeah, I got nothing. Um, I'm not hiring them. So, and I would say I'm like most bosses. Kristen might be nicer. She might be like, I'll coach them into it, but it's okay, by the way, Kristen, to admit you're not, not nicer. Um, but you don't have to. I'm not putting words in your mouth. All right. Uh, Let's see, next question. Um, and questions are getting low in votes, which often happens later into the broadcast. So if you have questions you want me to answer or you want to vote on those of others, hop into the extension or at the link the moderators will put up in chat and uh, add your questions. And when we run out of good questions or out of wine, uh, we end the broadcast. But I'm glad you're all here and this has been fun so far. Um, all right. Uh, how would you suggest actuating a growth mindset amongst a fixed mindset work environment with leaders who view themselves as having a growth mindset that may or may not be true? Uh, someone says, Kristen says positive intent, Ethan. There you go. Yes, I do have positive intent um, uh, almost all the time, but it's fun to make fun of it uh, when you don't. Um, would you suggest actuating, uh, this has got, whoever wrote this, I give you credit, this has got some serious wording in it. Um, bottom line is, you want to have a growth mindset and you feel that not everybody around you does. So uh, one of the most famous stories of this is from Enron. 
Uh, they hired people where they wanted them to be the smartest guy in the room. And if you hire people and tell them, well, you have to be really smart, smart is not something you can change. Um, and so uh, I would say uh, if you're in a fixed mindset place, you can still have a growth mindset. You can still believe that you're going to grow and improve and change, even if the people there don't. Um, like growth mindset is about you and how you respond to changes and how you respond to challenges. So my first thing would be to say, ignore the leaders, um, meaning you can still work on yourself no matter what leader you have. But if you have fixed mindset leaders, you have to realize they're going to judge you based on their own yardstick. So they're going to think, for example, if you failed at something or if you struggled, it's because you're dumb and you'll never get better. So you do have to be careful about risk taking in an environment like that because the leaders won't reward it. They won't be like, well, you gave it your try. Awesome you. They'll be like, yeah, it wasn't done. You suck. Um, so over time, I would try to get out of that. Um, and uh, so uh, I would try to get out of that situation. I'd try to move on. Um, uh, so, um, <clears throat> okay. Uh, I would try to move on if I had to, but meanwhile, I would work on myself. Um, so uh, that's what I would try to do there. Uh, I wondered a little bit about this answer because the question's a little bit complex, but I would basically say you can control yourself and beware of fixed mindset leaders. That said, you can still talk to your leader. And, you know, I talk about this all the time on almost every show. Um, if you're truly working for a bad boss, you want to try and get to where you can get out. You can get out of that situation. But in the short term, you have to manage it. Like bad bosses happen and it can even happen in good workplaces. I've had bosses I didn't love at my workplace um, and many that I do, but not all. Um, so uh, what I would say is um, try to make the best of it and try to talk to them and see, hey, I'd like to take a risk here, but I might fail. Would you be OK with that? Or how could we do this in a way that you'd feel comfortable? And if you get strong, no buying signals, then don't do it and go figure out how to get to another job if you can. And I don't say that flip, but at the same time, I am going to do a show in, you know, nine days or whatever on the 29th, 10 days, 11 days, can't count, uh, on how to find a better job. So go watch that show and find a better job. Um, okay, uh, next question is, how do you read nonfiction books? Do you have a system to take notes for longer knowledge retention? Oh boy. Um, so this drives me nuts. Uh, when I was younger, um, I could remember everything like perfectly. Uh, I swear I had, I had a nearly eidetic memory, um, like photographic memory, not quite. Uh, <laughs> yeah, somebody's, making fun of the number multiplication I talked about. Um, but now I don't. Um, so often I have to go back to books or if I have them on uh, audio, I'll have to listen to them a couple times. And then sometimes I take notes, but mostly I try to figure out one or two things. And I said this earlier in the broadcast that you can put into practice. Um, you forget so quickly that you have to try and do something from the book in order to make it real. So books I've read recently, I'm trying to learn to be better at asking questions rather than telling. Um, uh, I'm trying to get better at uh, listening more. And uh, I read a book called Humble Inquiry. I've read some other books about questions. And basically I put them into practice as best I can. And I try to give myself little reminders. So what I did with humble inquiry is right now it's sitting on my coffee table in my office. So every time I meet with somebody, it's right there in front of me. Um, 
Somebody says, I'm on mobile, uh, but what's your streaming schedule? The mods will answer that. You can find it on my website. Uh, you can uh, get push notifications there. My streaming schedule, because I work full time, is irregular. So it's not super consistent. Um, all right. Uh, do you have a system of taking notes for longer knowledge retention? I don't. I put things into practice, and that's what I do. Um, okay. Uh, I'm reading Ed's long question. Maybe we'll get to that later. Um, so uh, let's see. Um, do you think LinkedIn pro coaching is actually beneficial? I don't know. I don't have any experience with it. That's the next question. It'll pop up here in a second. Um, I can't really answer this one because I've never tried it. Uh, I've seen it there. I use LinkedIn a lot and I've never seemed, I, it's never seemed that interesting to me. I'm always a little suspect of like mass market dumbing things down, um, you know, to the, to the like easiest degree, uh, like click here and get a coach that scares me. Um, you know, I'm not super into that. Uh, so I don't know more about it, though. I'd have to learn more about it. Uh, maybe I'll take a look at it and be able to tell you more. Um, we're cutting through the questions. Uh, watching slash reading a review of a book for input versus reading the whole thing. So I'm all for this. Um, and in fact, that's what I did at the beginning of the broadcast. I talked about Carol Dweck's mindset. I didn't read the whole thing. I read a book summary. I can't remember. It's called some book summary, I can find it here. It's in my, uh, it's actually in my Kindle books. By the way, I read so much or I get so much from books. I use Audible for audiobooks. I use Kindle. I get physical books sometimes when I want to mark them up or be able to refer to them. But um, let me figure out whose brand of book this was because it was a pretty good book summary. Um, uh, let's see. Um, I'm trying to figure this out real quick. Give me a sec. Do, 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 do. It's a really short book summary. So now I'm paging all the way back to the title page rather than jumping. Uh, it's by Sumo Reads. So one of the many companies that makes book summaries is Sumo Reads. There's lots of them. There's executive book summaries. Uh, um, I'm all for it because I think you can get 80% out of a book really quickly. Um, you can get the main ideas and the main prompts, particularly from someone who summarizes them professionally. And so I guess I would say, uh, read the summary. And then if that's really interesting to you, go read the whole book. This summary I read on the train ride. I, I commute by train into Seattle, uh, for my work every day. I read it all on the train this morning. So I was through a whole book in preparation for this show in 30 minutes, uh, you know, reading a whole book would have taken for well hours i didn't have i'm all for it um one of the things i like and if you hang out here you'll find it uh is i give um i love short pithy quotes that are easy to remember so rex was asking earlier about how to remember stuff um like decisive which i've talked about has this acronym rap w-r-a-p um and uh, I like things that are mnemonics that make things easy to remember. So RAP stands for widen your options, reality test your assumptions. Um, the A is slipping my mind, but chat will fill it in. See, there's a problem, but I could get it back. And P is prepare to be wrong. Oh, A is attain distance. So uh, that allows me to remember a whole book in four letters. Well, the same thing I like to read short. Uh, and uh, I love that uh, staff's in here answering the Ed Lives question um, because unfortunately I, I wouldn't answer that question. It's not that it's not a valid question. It's just I'm very careful to keep my stream clear of um, Twitch technology questions because it opens a door I can't walk through. Um, but I love that other staff are here because uh, they're free to answer and I don't mind. Um, so thank you for that. Um, and I don't mind the questions. It's just understand I don't want to turn the channel into where people come to either complain about Twitch, which Ed's not doing, or to ask about it because that's not what I'm here to do. 
Um, all right, we're getting down to the last of the questions that have a bunch of votes. Um, there are close to 60 of you in, in chat, though, still. So if you have any more questions, stick them in. We're going to take the next one, which is, um, I enjoy my learning study process, and I always seek to optimize it. Therefore, I would love to hear some of your good practices or habits for learning. Um, looks like we had some cheers come through. Thank you for that. Very appreciated. So um, what do I have to say about, uh, I've, I've talked about some of my study habits. Um, my number one study habit, and someone correctly said earlier that I looked tired today. Um, so I'll talk about that for a second, then I'll talk about why that matters. My number one study habit is don't try to study when you're tired. Uh, I got through college by a rule that said, uh, never study for a test I can sleep for instead. And so uh, I had a variation of that rule, which is if I was reading my textbook and I found myself staring blankly at the wall over my desk for a third consecutive time, I went to bed no matter what. If the homework wasn't done, if the test was in the morning, I, it didn't matter. I always went because uh, I wasn't getting anything out of the book. I would stare at it and then I'd find myself doing this. The reason I look tired, and it's a fun story to share, I do sometimes share Twitch stories. Yesterday, I was in an all-day off-site for Twitch where we were working on next year's plan. And um, we were working on the strategic plan for Twitch to make it a better business. And we were talking about, yeah, it says cramming doesn't work. I agree. Um, we were working on things uh, like what are the priorities for the business for the next year and what's the strategic direction of the business. Um, and it was super fun and I love to share because not everybody knows the Twitch leadership team cares incredibly deeply about the community on Twitch and about the platform. Um, and I'm really proud of that team because uh, they are the biggest defenders, even though we may not do a good job and we sometimes suck at it and we miss all kinds of features and blah, blah, blah. They uh, defend the creator, the streamer, and trying to let streamers make a living and express themselves. They are religious zealots about it. Um, and the result is I flew home really late last night. Um, I uh, took a late flight home and I got in late. Um, and so that's why the bag's under the eyes. Sorry about that. I will bring more energy uh, Monday, uh, next Monday. Well, first, we'll talk about that real quick now. I'll talk about my coming shows just uh, so everybody knows. I'll be on Devin Nash's show at Devin Nash um, or Twitch TV slash Devin Nash 2 p.m. Uh, Monday the 22nd. So just a few days from now. Um, we'll be going actually over my schedule for a week and I call the show, uh, what the hell does the boss do all day? So if you have the question, um, what the hell does the boss do all day? You'll at least get to understand what I do all day for a week. Um, and maybe you'll find it interesting. Uh, his show's fun that way. He loves to talk about, uh, executive life. And so I'll share some of it. And then uh, a week from Monday, we'll do the winning job search. It'll be based a lot on that book I showed earlier. I'll, I'll pop it back up super quick. Um, it'll be based on which book? Hang on one second. It'll be based on this book, What Color Is Your Parachute? I highly recommend it. Uh, I recommend it not only for how to find a job, but also uh, for how to know what you'd be best suited at or enjoy the most. All right, so those are our coming shows. And I should also mention, by the way, um, I appreciate it when the viewers invite others to view. Uh, they, they, uh, we grow by referral. Um, what I do here doesn't fit Twitch very well. Obviously, Twitch is primarily gaming. If it's not gaming, it's just chatting. It's like very casual. Uh, or it's art, it's cooking. There aren't very many people coaching here. Uh, I love this interactive format and your questions, but uh, to grow the audience and to reach more people, which is what I wanna do, 
share what I can with as many people as I can. Um, I need you, if you enjoy the show, to bring your friends. And uh, Quentin Talentimo says he just ordered the book. Awesome. Bobby Vargas. All right, you guys are putting the pressure on me. If we're going to read the book, then I'll have to find something to say that's not in the book, um, which I, I was already planning on. But uh, the book is really good. And so you'll be able to add a lot to the, to the discussion. All right, next question. Um, as you have progressed through your career, how has your rise in seniority impacted your work-life balance? Oh, Lord. Uh, this is not a good answer. Um, it's gotten worse, generally. Uh, what wine are you drinking this evening? Yeah, I'm drinking Riesling. Uh, that's, that is correct. Uh, comes from Napa Valley, a winery we like, uh, called Hagafen. Um, I happen to be a Christian. Hagafen, however, is the only um, kosher Jewish winery in the uh, Silicon Valley. And so every time they've got all over their walls, the menus from the White House, because when the Israeli ambassador, I'm starting to slur, so we're going to have to stop. Um, when the Israeli ambassador comes to the White House, they have to serve kosher wine and it comes from here. All right. Um, so seniority has not helped my work-life balance. I tell this story often. I left work early today uh, in order to do the stream. My assistant, I do have an assistant. That part of my career getting better has been nice. I have a wonderful lady who takes care of my schedule. But she has to schedule me to leave early. My normal work day is um, I leave to get to the train. I leave the house at 725 in the morning. I get home at 725 at night and then I work some more at night. Um, however, that's me. I'm very driven. Um, <clears throat> I guess the drawer being open was unacceptable. Uh, the drawer being open is making me anxious. All right, thank you, Observer. I didn't know that's real interaction with chat uh, when, when the drawer gets closed. All right, anyway. So uh, please don't ask for any other modifications of the room that will, no, that's, that's apparently this room is on remote control um, and it's controlled by chat. It's a great chat bot. Uh, I'm surprised Ethan doesn't drink 20% pass out in the ditch hobo wine. I might if it tasted good, if it was sweet enough. I like sweet wines. Um, all right, look, uh, work-life balance. Part of this is a choice. I like to drive hard. I'm wired to work. If I didn't work, I'm doing something else hard charging. Some of you know about my life. Um, I, I, uh, I rock climb. I play hockey. I climb mountains. I'm on the board of a nonprofit. Um, you know, it's, it's, I'm pretty driven that way. So that's partly my wiring. Other people have better work-life balance than I do, but it is a choice. It's a choice how much you're going to work and how much you're going to pursue that. What I can say is my job got harder and harder, uh, as I went from engineer to engineering manager to executive in a startup to, um, a manager in Amazon where I launched Amazon Video, what's now Prime Video. And then when I was a director and I built the Amazon App Store, that was probably the very hardest. I had 800 people. I had them, um, I had them in uh, Bangalore, India, as well as China um, in Beijing. And that job was grueling because I would leave Seattle, fly to China, um, I flew an airline named Hainan. Hainan uh, is a Chinese airline, so the seats are built for the average Chinese build, which I am not. Um, and so you sit like this for 10 hours, and then you get to Beijing. Um, and then you get ripped off by the taxis, but that's another story. Uh, when I finally... Uh, got to vice president at Amazon, one of the decisions I made was I was done. I felt I had achieved enough. So there's people above me and I could have kept chasing it. One of the things that allowed me to get some work-life balance, and I would suggest this to you, is I decided I would stop chasing. 
I decided I will work hard, I will do good work, but I will do what's fun. And that's when, in fact, I started pushing to go work at Twitch because I thought, I love video games. I love video gamers. I want to go work on what I want to do, um, not on what is best for my career. So these are trade-offs you have to pick. Um, earlier jobs, I picked what was going to grow my career and challenge me the most. Now I pick what I'm most passionate about. And... Um, that's grown my career too, but like I'm putting time now into the Easy Coach. Running the Easy Coach show, even though I only broadcast once a week for, I don't know, I've been online an hour and a half. I prepare the show. Uh, I work with my moderators, uh, with a friend who posts this stuff on YouTube. I work with Awesome Dave on the technology. I post on social media. Um, and I answer uh, people who are asking me things or I'm connecting to them in LinkedIn where I'm hiring. I probably spend six hours a week just on the easy coach. So I've taken time from work, but I've put it right back into a different type of work. That's a choice. But if you I am going to say unless you're amazingly gifted or lucky, um, if you want to have a great career, uh, you're going to have to. Um, uh, you're gonna have to um, work hard. So I am getting tired. I'm gonna cut it off uh, very shortly. But uh, so I need some phonetics, Doctor Uino, Drino. I'm mangling it, I'm sure. But you're gonna you you post good things. So I need you in chat to give me phonetics on your name. Otherwise, you're just gonna be Doc. Um, so Doc, how far does one typically have to climb the ranks to get a personal assistant asking for a friend? Yeah. So, uh, number one, read Tim Ferriss in the four hour work week. And if you really want a personal assistant, get one for 10 bucks a week or whatever out of India. Um, so you can have a personal assistant doing a bunch of stuff for you working out of India, um, very cheaply. Number two at Amazon. Anyway, uh, you get an assistant when you reach director level, director level in our company is generally managing a hundred to 200 people. Some other companies, Twitch does it a little earlier. So, uh, Drew Eno, all right. So, like, argue Eno. Um, uh, anyway, um, uh, Twitch uh, supplies personal assistance to people a little earlier. Uh, and so, there you have it. All right, I'm going to scan the rest of the questions and see what we got that's great in here. But since I'm rubbing my eyes, I've been going an hour and a half, we may call it good. Um, when seeking a mentor. All right, somebody asked a question about getting laid off. That's a great question for job seeking. Come back on the 29th and it'll be more relevant. Probably it'll get voted up then. Um, I'm just gonna buzz through these without posting them. What do you think of staying fit dieting for long work grinds? I think it's essential. Um, something I talked about early in the broadcast is how I grew up fat. Um, I grew up super heavy and I was uh, 70, um, I weighed about 70 pounds more. I didn't have the energy I have now until I lost weight. So definitely diet and health make a huge difference. Um, uh, Work-life balance got worse. Chat says your career identity took over your romance, hobby, and travel identity. Uh, I don't think so. I think I have those identities. I just think I'm busy constantly. Um, you know, the way my mind works and my uh, wife, so I have a romance identity. Um, she's on board with this. We have every weekend planned between now and early November. The last weekend we were discussing what we were going to do and we just booked tickets to go somewhere is the first weekend in November. It's just how we're wired. So I had to find someone who was wired like me to like hard work and to like being organized and driven um, in order to have a good romance identity. We share the hobby of rock climbing and, and skiing. So I have those identities. Um, 
and we certainly travel a lot. Join the Discord. Uh, Shadow Fox was telling me I got to be careful not to post too many travel pictures. So if you hang out for a while, you'll see I do a lot of that. All right. Um, what is the secret to motivating employees to be effective at an Elon Musk level expectation? I have no idea. Um, you know, Elon Musk is like one of the top three or four entrepreneurs on earth today, or top 10 anyway. I don't want to get into debate about where he ranks, but um, how to motivate people to be at that level of expectation? Um, you would have to, you can either be a slave driver, uh, you can lead by example, which I do think he does, or you can pick incredibly inspiring um and yes doctor or devin does love elon musk uh Trino, i get it it's a good question i think the way he does it his missions are super inspiring uh put people on the moon change the world of cars build the hyperloop like people work at those places they bust their asses because he has them convinced they're going into the history books I've told this story on another stream. I went to interview for VP of software working for Musk at SpaceX. And, um, you know, uh, the reason I went, even though I love Amazon, I love Twitch, is I thought if I can be part of putting people on Mars, I'm changing the history of humankind. And so, you know, that's how you motivate people at that level. Um, our LinkedIn, Udemy trainings, uh, certified scrum master, et cetera, which usually costs thousands to get certified, really worth our time. Um, depends on the training. There's a few well-recognized trainings. I think scrum master could be one of, one of them. I think they're not bad. I think over the course, I wouldn't uh, take those trainings. The question is, are they worth the money? I wouldn't take them purely to check the box and put it on my resume. I'd take it because I want to learn and I want to get better. And then I do think they probably pay off on your resume over time. They may not pay off in the first job, but I think they pay off over a lifetime. Again, you know, I'd be careful about the cost and it comes down to whether or not you can afford it. Or if you can get somebody else to pay for it. There were a bunch of people earlier who suggested I'd do that. So I think I've only got one question left. Um, when seeking a mentor, is it a good idea to try and find more than one for different perspectives? Or do you think that is too many possible conflicting opinions? Um, I sometimes have more than one mentor on different topics, but not for duplicative perspective. The thing about mentors is you've got to have the time to take advantage of them. Uh, it's rude and disrespectful to a mentor or if you're paying a coach not to do your homework. Um, and so like I have a coach and I emailed her today and asked what else do I need to do to get ready for our next meeting because um, I want to always make sure I'm getting the most value out of that. So if you want to have two mentors, have one first, make sure you're getting all the value, decide you have extra time. And then if you do and you want another mentor as opposed to reading a book or watching more of me or YouTube videos, whatever, then add one. But don't get to where you're then showing up having done no prep. Um, all right. So that's all the questions. I burned through them uh, because dinner's waiting. And so with that, I'm going to thank you all for being here. I really hope you come uh, see me on Devin Nash's show uh, Monday the 22nd. It'll be in the afternoon. We'll talk about what the hell does the boss do all day. Uh, Solaren, uh, you were great. Thank you again for the, the big cheer. Um, T Weirdo, good to see you. Love to hear from you. Um, and then I'll be back on this show with the how to get a job uh, question on... Um, Monday the 29th on job hunting. And so I'm looking forward to that too. Uh, we now have Discord. I'll check into that occasionally when I can during the week. Um, and there'll be other posts there. Uh, follow us on YouTube. Eventually we'll get to a thousand followers there and they'll start paying me. Meanwhile, you guys have watched a ton of stuff on YouTube. So if you've missed anything, you can catch up on it there. It's a great place to point people if you want to refer them to me. Um, they can catch up on little pieces of shows. Uh, we cut the shows up into five minute segments or eight minute segments for each question I answer. So they can just go watch or you can go rewatch any one question there. 
So usually like tonight's show will be posted within a day or two. All right. Uh, thanks everybody. And I appreciate Chalupa Whale, uh, your cheer that made a bunch of people uh, subs. That was awesome. All right. Thank you all. Have a great night.